So what's popping? What's poppin? Uh, how you doing? Oh whatever. How you doing? <laughs> oh whatever. Anyway. <laughs> happy it's saturday right happy saturday everyone i want to thank you so much let me put down this lysol bottle i want to thank you so much for coming in this is new so y'all bear with me i promise y'all i'm a, i'm a, i'm gonna get the hang of this this is my second time on instagram you know live <laughs> with an interview the first one was a success so we really pray that this one is a success as well um, I'm going to be getting an exclusive interview from Ken the Messenger, which I'm super excited for. Um, oh, baby. Um, I really don't know how this works. So, I see him in here, but I don't know how to pull him in here. But anyway, how's y'all day going? Let me know in the comments how y'all doing today or whatever. Let me know works uh but yeah let me know in the comments how it is going once we get him in here we're gonna get the tea y'all don't judge me today i came through because it's pretty early like 12 it's pretty early for an interview so i had to come prepared period poop period poop <laughs> but yeah hopefully we can get him in here soon i do want to play, play a brief play his song real quick the song that we're gonna be talking about let me hopefully hopefully instagram me like facebook and gonna cut me off we're just gonna play a little bit though his new song which let's see it's called something hey what's up <laughs> We're gonna play your song a little bit before we start. Let me know if y'all can hear. James more uh, James Fortune moment. I'm loving it. So it. talk to me about this song. So honestly, first of all, how you doing? You good? Mm -hmm. I'm going good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm a little sleepy. I actually about to take a nap, but I couldn't. I was watching Power in the show. Of course, mm -hmm. I couldn't get a nap in. But uh, <laughs> but uh, so this song actually came about. So you, in, anybody who. Um, has been following my music. I've been rapping for um, the last five years. Mm -hmm. um, last year, in 2021, maybe around September, I just felt like God was telling me, and, and knew God was telling me that he wanted me to get back in my worship bag. And so after I dropped my album, I just started making worship music. And this was the first 
They got like three or four songs. This was like the first one that we released, so called something beautiful. It's very much different from your other music, very much. Yeah, like your exactly. other music is boom, boom, like a hard track, and then yeah. this one, I'm get, I'm getting a James Fortune moment. That's for sure. And you I know what's it. crazy? I don't really even listen to, like I I know who James Fortune is, but I don't listen to none of that stuff. So mm -hmm. people say that I gotta kind of do my history and worship and stuff, you know. It's yeah. really good though. It's a really good. Thank you. Song. I appreciate it. Thank you um, so much. Um, because you do like gospel rap, CHH, the I would say I would base it down to the urban community. What are some things mm -hmm. that um, what are some stereotypes that the urban community deals with that you're like, okay, people people see it as this, but we don't really do this. Put me in a put me in a a gospel rap category. Mm -hmm. um, that is like the number one thing. I don't, I don't mind it now. I kind of got used to it, but that was like a big thing for me. Like I didn't understand why. I'm just, I'm just a, like they say, you're a Christian rapper, and I'm like, no, I'm a Christian who just raps. Like mm -hmm. I've been on different R and B songs. I, I wrote an R and B song or two of them, mm -hmm. um, and I've been on like regular rap songs. I just, that's one of the stereotypes um, that I don't like, just because it's like. That's not who I am. It's just what I do. If mm -hmm. That makes sense. So that's that's the main one. I mean, but besides, you know, people saying, you know, people that don't cuss in their music is corny and stuff like that. But I try to I try to break those boxes because growing up, I listened to um, like trap, but I was still in church, so I kind of knew how to make it intertwine. If that makes sense. So I never got corny from my music, but I have heard that. You know, the CHH Christian rap community music is corny. Yeah. I've heard the same thing surprisingly. I think ever since, because I grew up in the church. So I mm -hmm. think ever since I felt God for myself uh -huh. and I know the different styles of music that's out there, because I think it's like we have um, R&B Christian music, we have jazz, we have neo so like we have so many right. different genres now that we didn't yeah. have before. I think it's yeah. opened a whole new world to where Christians are no longer forced to listen to, you know, choir music or yeah, quartet, absolutely. things like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think it's just different. Like, now we, our generation, we can make what we want to hear. We don't have mm -hmm. to settle for what, you know, our forefathers have got or follow that footstep. You know, right. like, if you want to make R&B worship, you can. I'm actually trying to make R&B worship right now. Where it's like you're talking to God, but it still has that R&B feel. Because right. I like R&B, you know, I like smooth, so I don't... The rap is cool, don't get me wrong, but it's mm -hmm. like, I like multiple genres. I don't like to be in no box. I've been really on the R&B wave for like yeah. a good month. And for yeah. some reason, it just hits different. It's like, like it's like worship music and and it's like a little beat to... It just hits different and it's like Absolutely. a deeper connection. I don't Absolutely. know, I've been on that wave. For sure. No, I got you. Likewise. So, what? Who are three people that have been most influential to you in your ministry or your music? Mm, so I do. Uh, I'll do. You want me to do rap or worship or both? You could do both. Okay. So, rap wise, I would say, of course. Uh, the light skin Godfather music Drake. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, uh, J Cole, mm -hmm. my uncle. Um, and I don't know. I, okay, I would say Lil Baby, mm -hmm. rap, or yeah. Andy Minio. It's a lot of them, you know. Um, but him. worship, I would say um, Maverick City recently, more recently mm -hmm. than ever. Um, what's that guy's name? Oh, what's it? Ty Delaney. Mm -hmm. And um, I forgot this guy's name. Maybe Israel Halton. Mm -hmm. Maybe. That's actually good. It's ones. another guy. Yeah, it's another guy. I, I keep I forgot his name because I don't. I just Travis Green, but that's not what I'm thinking of. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's a few, honestly. And honest to be honest with you, I don't. 
when it came to worship, I really didn't have as much influence because I didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of just like, like the songs weren't based off other songs or like, it wasn't like, I mean, like it was for rap. Like I can listen to a, a, a Meek Mill song and then be like, get some inspiration. But worship is kind of, it was kind of different because it's personal. So mm. I'm not copying how they feel. I got to actually get into my relationship with God myself and tell them how I feel, you know? So it's a little right. different. I think honestly, the way worship has been displayed in the, in the recent years, it's been very much different. Like before, uh -huh. you know, we're hearing, I don't know if you grew up in the church or you dealt with anything like that. Yeah, but sure. growing up in the church, you know, speaking in tongues and, mm -hmm. you know, they're still doing that, but it's more of a, like, you, it feels genuine, if that makes sense. It doesn't feel like yeah. it's for a show. And if somebody shouts, just like, you know, what the, yeah. you know what church people do. You don't have it to feels do it. real. You don't have to do it now. Like mm -hmm. our generation is, well, I won't say our generation, but I would say outside of like the church scene, it's okay. like if you go to a Maverick concert or if you right. go to a Jonathan McGrenner's concert, you right. don't have to shout, speak in tongues because that's right. not what they're doing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Right. But if you do, you're not out of line. Versus right. in the church scene, it's like if you don't say no tongues, you ain't got no anointing. If you don't shout, God ain't been good, good to right. you, you know, and it's, yeah, so I try to stay away from those. I agree. I think we accept more in the faith now than we have did in yeah. years before. So I know social media is a big thing dealing with not only music, but a brand in general. So how do you deal with the pressures of, you know, social media and involve, involving your brand and your music into social media? Honestly, that's the pressure for me, like posting and being really involved. Mm -hmm. I tell my manager all the time, like, I don't want to do it. Um, I know if I if I was to do more social media, I would I would have more um, attention and, um, and, and insight and reach. But it's for me, it's like I want to be the guy in real life. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the guy on social media that's so influenced by social media that I can't focus on real life. Like I took a fast last year from social media. Wow. And I, uh, like I took maybe two weeks off mm -hmm. and because I'm like, I don't want to be influenced. Like I, I don't want to see someone on social media and feel like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta be like that or I gotta do that. Right. And so I didn't, I wasn't coming back no time soon because I had mm -hmm. dropped my album. I did the press week, um, everything I was going to do. And then we already scheduled posts. And so I'm like, I'm cool. And then um, when I came back, I was verified. And I felt like that was God's way of saying good. Like, you didn't let it control you. You you did what I asked you to do, which is take a break from it. Mm. You know, I know I should do more. However, it's like, I don't never want to let it control me. So if I'm, if I'm doing more to help other people or to, you know, connect with people and influence people in the best way possible, then fine. But if mm -hmm. I'm doing it just to keep up with the Jones, like I had to unpause the shade room. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's like, I don't want, I don't want to care about nothing that they got going on. Right. I got, it's enough problems and issues in the world. We have war and people mad about what somebody wore that they wore. Right. Or who wore it first. So we right. took her man and his girl is, uh, I don't care. Right. I feel you. I most definitely feel it. That's actually a good thing that you mentioned that you did a fast. And then after, mm -hmm. you know, God showed up and show up and you verified, oh, honey, that's yeah. not everybody's testimony. And that's right. honestly, I've taken a fast before and I'm just mm -hmm. like, I do not, I just feel like I'm lured back. Like it's like calling my name. But I'm, uh, I agree yeah. with you. The pressure of social media posting and doing the hashtag keeping relevant is so hard like mm -hmm. it's most yeah. definitely a job yeah like i even had to turn my comments off wow. i don't even care what you got to say mm -hmm. don't even <laughs> if, if it touches you cool i don't even want to know your response like if i right. if i wear something nice and you like it perfect i don't don't even tell me i don't care if i say something <laughs> bad you know and it bless your day mm -hmm. oh god i don't you don't need to leave you don't need to let me know that i'm good right like and it's like I think it has to be like that for me because mm -hmm. now I'm more, I'm more, because it can be discouraging like working mm -hmm. on something, like video or music, and then 
you posting and you don't get nothing and then you're like oh wow I did all this for what you know what i'm saying but it's like we we looked for social to social media for that validation mm. versus looking to who we're doing it for right. just letting social media be a plus or a bonus right instead so of my you, primary source of encouragement mm. so do you yeah. think that um you know turning off your comments things like that is like humbling you in a, a sense as well because um, like people aren't they don't have the opportunity to gas you up stuff like that it could i don't i'm not one so i'm not really active on other social like so what i've learned is um when you comment on your friend's stuff mm-hmm. they comment on your stuff mm-hmm. i'm not like if i if you post something i promise you i'm not i'm not gonna comment on it mm-hmm. unless i like unless you did something like really good i might mm-hmm. like put some fire emojis or but i might text you and say congratulations or dm mm-hmm. you like you know what I'm saying? Right. So I don't really get a lot of that engagement on mm. the regular unless I do something big. Mm. So it's not, it, it can't really humble me because I don't get it like that. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So turning it off really just allows me to not seek that validation. So if I did a music video and I mm-hmm. post it, I don't want you to, I don't, I'm going to turn it off. So you don't, I can't even look at you to say, Dang, all these people really rock with it. Like, right. unless I need your, you know, unless we doing like a poll, which one should we do mm-hmm. or which one should we drop? And that's different. But just right. to be like, Ken, that is so nice. You are so talented. No, I'm okay. I know. Thank you. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. so now I want to, I feel like with every artist, I think it's important to talk about branding because that's kind of what people see before they hear the music. Mm-hmm. So are you the type of artist that's very strategic with your brand? You're like, okay, for this, for this EP or this album, you know, we're going to do all, all this. And then, you know, mm-hmm. you sync up your social media, and, you know, everything's just all strategic. Or are you that type of person who's very spontaneous? I'll be very honest with you. I feel like I can. Mm-hmm. I don't care. <laughs> like I went to school for this. I know, and I should. And, and, I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying it's right, but I feel like if I'm not honest, because I can tell you, yes, I, I know what to say, you know, mm-hmm. like what people want to hear when they ask these type of questions. But the truth is, I'm I'm not as, as much on my brand as I should be on social media. Mm-hmm. However, my, like my thing is, and my man, like Patrice K. Coakley, the baseline group, um, she, she drills me. Like she 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 has hired people to do stuff about branding, do stuff about marketing. Um, but I'm working on me in real life. So mm. it's like, it's hard to do both, if that makes right. sense. And, and and honestly, it's it's hard but easy because I don't, so my, so basically right now I'm doing worship music at, at this time. Um, and, I'm, and I'm, that that takes a whole nother realm of getting closer to God. You can't just mm. sit and listen to music and write. Mm. Like I know a lot of writers, I know a writer who, actually just about to he's about to get picked up on um 1501 making mm-hmm. the stallions label mm-hmm. and i sent him a worship song any song i send him he he write he could write and send it back he's, mm-hmm. he hasn't sent it's my brother he ain't sent me nothing back wow but he's not in worship mm. he, he he doesn't have that type of you know you just can't send this to people and you got to have that you got it got to be real for you mm. you know what i'm saying and so one thing that I've been doing, even when I post certain stuff, I make sure, even in my stories, if I'm reposting something or like if somebody tagged me in something or mentioned me in something and say, you know, let's do this. Like my best friend, um, I had a music video and it was at a bar. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I think we were drinking water. We probably mm-hmm. was drinking liquor, but I doubt it. We, I think mm-hmm. we were just drinking water, but we had to look like we was taking shots. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> she, she posted it, right? Mm-hmm. And I reposted it. And I'm like, no, I got to delete that because I don't want to mess up nobody else. And they don't know mm. it's water. You mm. know what I'm saying? So right. I do. I, I'm working on branding in that area. Mm. But I like I got to do it in real life. Like right. I, I don't even go to certain places no more mm. because I got to do it. Like I got to be a walking billboard in real life. Mm. I got to be the example. Right. And I can't and and I can't do focus on that in social in social media so much that I'm not doing it in my real life because when I get done not posting some stuff or posting certain stuff and then I'm living a whole nother life then what how how important is branding really true and I think that's how some people get caught up like they're one way in person and then on social media they're completely a different way 
and people for some reason people are longing for authenticity if that's yeah. how you pronounce it <laughs> people sure. are looking for, for sure. something that's really real and if they feel like you're not giving off real i yeah. mean they're gonna call you out that's for sure right for sure exactly so what would you what no how would you describe your responsibility with the music industry what do you mean like um how do i break this down so how like i know some people will be like you know i'm doing music to encourage people or i'm doing music to push people to their greatness what do you feel your overall responsibility is for you know in music So, uh, um, I think my responsibility for, for is to really make a change, to really make a difference. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people, I don't, I've always wanted the person that I didn't see. I always mm -hmm. wanted to be the person I didn't have growing up. I would listen to a lot of, like, what's crazy is I used to be 12, 13, watching music interviews. Mm -hmm. Like, one day, I'm, that's going to be me. Like, I used to watch, uh, Stella Award red carpet and then to go to the Stella Awards and be on the red carpet it's like really crazy and so it's like mm -hmm. I've always wanted to to do that but I really wanted to not just be that I wanted to be able to always be that big brother to guys who couldn't who don't have that or right. be that big brother to girls who father ain't there well father is there but just don't understand or whatever you know I just really want to mm -hmm. be a change make a difference I don't want to just do music, get money. It's really not about that, right. honestly, for me. I, if it was about that, I would have stopped a long time ago. Right. You know, but right. um, I just really want to be the change. Like, I feel like that's that's my responsibility. God gave me a gift. And so my responsibility is to use it for him and make a change. And that's why I even try to do all genres because, mm -hmm. like, I got some flack for doing R&B. Mm -hmm. I wrote an R&B. Well, I wrote a few R&B songs. One's called Permission, and one is called Tenderness. Mm -hmm. And they was like, "You're making sex music," and I'm like, "Yeah." Like, what Christians supposed to do mm. when they go outside? Mm. Listen to Tank. You think you ain't gonna have sex off Tank? When mm. we, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right. You know, I'm just like, what, mm -hmm. what are we supposed to listen to? Like, if, if I take my chick out on a date, what what I'm supposed to play? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying I can't. But let's say I'm not that strong. Let's say I, I have a problem with, with, with like, and I've, and I've had that problem where I couldn't watch certain stuff. I couldn't listen mm -hmm. to certain stuff. Like, and so what do I listen to that's clean, that's still got that vibe, but that this ain't got, a, it just doesn't have all of that extra, you know, I'm going to take your panties off and I'm going to do this. Like, right. So it's like making, making that music and R&B help me to help other people, mm -hmm. you know, my little brother, when you take a girl out, now I got something you can listen to that still vibe. And it's so it's so crazy because my little brother, I actually have a little brother that's 18. Mm -hmm. And he makes certain songs. Certain, some of my songs, he makes his ringtone. Mm -hmm. And so when he made tenderness, he made tenderness his, his ringtone. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's so dope. Because mm -hmm. now, like, if he want to take a chick out, he going to do what he want to do. Let's get right. that understood. However... Mm -hmm. You ain't got the, the, the inspiration and the motivation by saying, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. You can do, you know, you ain't got all of that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's my, that's what I feel like. That's my responsibility is mm -hmm. to be the change, be the difference, and show people to what and learn, learn from mm -hmm. other people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I love how you say, um, be the change. I think music, I feel like the, no offense if you know, the good. older generation is watching, but I feel like right. they, they, how do I say this? They don't understand the importance of music. And even mm -hmm. me, I didn't understand at first, you know, being in radio, be, doing TV. I'm like, girl, yeah. you know, music, it's okay. Music, you ain't making no money. That's how I always looked at it. Mm -hmm. And so I mm -hmm. got into, like I said recently, so I got into the um, Christian R&B flow. I'm like, you know, really, this could be somebody's worship song. Like if this was really, if this song was the one song to get them connected to god i mean how that's that's a good thing so i think we need to look at music as like you said as a doorway for change instead of oh this is gonna make me look good or this is gonna get me famous so that's a good thing that you pointed out a lot of artists do not be like girl i want to get famous girl i want to get my name out there so i love how you mentioned that yeah. 
So what is one thing that you wish you would have known at the beginning of your music career that you know now? That everybody's not going to support you. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a, it, that's, it's a lot of number one. Like, I'm going to give you two. Can I give you two? Mm-hmm. So everybody's not going to support you, and you got to be okay with that. Mm. Um, that's just that, it's self-explanatory. My second one is always, always, um, always, so always see God first. The mm. Bible talks about seeking him first. And he'll add everything else. But I don't think we really understand. Well, I didn't understand that um, a lot in my career. And I made a lot of mistakes. However, it also talks about everything will work out for our good. So it's mm-hmm. not even some of the mistakes was cool and, and, and cool and good. And I'm glad I had that experience. But it's like I probably I know I would have been much further had I just kept saying, all right, God, what you want me to do? Mm. All right, Father. Right, what's, 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 should I do this show? Should I not do this show? Should I join this? Should I not? Mm. And I think that would, I know for a fact, if I had kept doing that, but sometimes we get gifts, we get talents and abilities, and people keep talking um, and, and, uh, and, and telling us how good we are, telling us how great we do, and we get lost in that. And so we just accept gigs and we just mm. accept features and we just accept partnerships and we just sign mm. deals. And God be like, yo, I gave you this. Mm. Talk to me. I, that's right. not good for you. They ain't really not good for you. Mm. I'm going to stop talking next year. Right. Like, I've had so many managers. Mm-hmm. And I love them all to this day. Like, I probably mm. had, like, I had three plus one. So, I had three managers mm-hmm. my first three years. Um, And I love them all. Like, I still mm. talk to them. I still kick it with them. Mm. But... Now, the one I have now, I've been with since, for like four years. Wow. So, it's like, yeah, and, and, and she used to manage, she used to be my teacher. She managed Beyonce's father for a while. I helped okay. him write his book and all of that stuff. And and, and honestly, I didn't see God about that. I think mm-hmm. I did, but I, I can't say I did, because I really, and, and even in that, that saying, I, my mind is just business. Okay, give me another of the best business move. But... Um, yeah, seeking them first is, I think that's the most important thing that I would, if I can tell myself that six years you know, ago, I would definitely do that mm-hmm. because you can't go wrong. You can't. It might I, not be what you like, I, but you can't go wrong. True, true. I agree. I think, especially in the Christian faith, sorry to say, I think we take words from the Bible and we use it when it's convenient for us or like mm-hmm. for motivational, like, oh, yes, yeah, see God, but really don't know the meaning behind it. Mm-hmm. And once you grasp that meaning behind of actually seeking God in everything you do, yeah. um, it hits different. That's for sure. Like you see things that you're like, did they see that? Or mm-hmm. am I the only one experiencing this? So I yeah. completely agree with that, that. I wish I wish the same thing, honestly. I wish at the beginning of me doing TV and stuff, I wish I would have not listened so much to everybody's opinion. And I think, honestly, yeah. sorry to say, I think it's a young people thing. I think we just, mm-hmm. we want validation so bad. It's like, oh, okay, she if she's telling me that she really likes me, or if right. he's telling me this, you know, he really cares about me. And the whole time, they're really not. They're trying to get something out of you. Or like mm-hmm. you say, they want you to host your event, sing at the event. So I'm, right, right, right. I'm with you on that. That's actually a good one. So in 2022, I need the tea. What is all going down? Are you going to be dropping merch? Are you going to be coming? Of course, you're coming out with more music. You already said mm-hmm. that. But what else do you got going on? I'm actually working on a live recording. Okay. Um, so we had a meeting this morning. Mm-hmm. Um. So we're thinking about doing half rap and half worship. Wow. So like okay. two shows in one. Well, you're going to change everything. Mm-hmm. Might change the band, everything. I might even have like one, like two two separate tickets. Like if you want to hear rap, go ahead and rap. If you want to hear worship, go ahead and worship. Um, right. Um, that's pretty, That's honestly, that's all I know because mm-hmm. – and I've learned to not really make plans. And I, and I know it's weird. I know if people don't do it, if you plan to, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But mm-hmm. in my life, it's like, 
don't make plans because his, his he would change them in, in a heartbeat. Like mm. if you want to ask me last year what I would be doing right now, what I would be dropping, I still have music. Like I have a whole album worth of rap I could drop, but it's like nope, mm -hmm. stop that. Right, worship music. So I really don't know, honestly. Like I'm 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 really in the in the space where it's like whatever you tell me to do. If you tell me to. Mm go sing and perform at the prisons for the rest of this year and don't take no other gigs. I'm at that place. Like when you, you know, when you do something for so long and you're not getting where you want to be or where you think you want to be, you just submit to where you are and say, okay, mm. if you want me to stay here, I'll stay here. Like right. if, my, if, if, if your plan for me isn't to be famous or rich, okay. Because at the end of the day, what's the point of me doing it and I'm not in your will? Like, mm who's really who's really winning there you know what i'm yeah. saying so if i have to if you say um don't do nothing this year take the, you did a single that's it that's all, don't drop nothing else you know mm -hmm. of course i plan to of course mm -hmm. i want to you know but i really don't know i know i got some more music coming out for sure now that i, I feel like i got cleared um with that but i don't really know so, because you're talking about, you know, hearing the voice of God and, you know, mm -hmm. seeking God in everything, and everybody's experience is different, how do you feel you hear God the most? Do you hear him, like, when you're writing, you're like, you know, he's taking control of the pen? How do you feel like you hear God? So, I know he writes. Mm -hmm. uh, he tells me what to write. I know that for a fact. Because um, I literally, like, I be sitting there like, okay. I wish I like the song that you play, something beautiful. Mm -hmm. I literally was in the car driving and I'm like, man, I wish I could write to this song. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to write. Right. I'm, I'm a, a rap. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. know how to write that. 20 minutes later, I had it. And I'm calling my band, like, yo, meet me at, meet me at my house. We, mm -hmm. we got to record. You know what I'm saying? And so I know, I know that, you know, he does that. But I just have a feeling, and then I ask for confirmation. Mm. Um, always, God, give me a kind. I got to do a show today, mm -hmm. and as soon as I get off with you, and I'm like, man, they asked me, so they asked me quick. So we was on uh, on the phone, and I'm like, yo, I need this. He's like, bet. I need you to do the show. Mm -hmm. I'm like, bet. And then I think about, I thought about, like, oh man, Pop, is it cool if I? Cause that's what we're supposed to do. Like, mm. what if what if we not? Like, what if what if that's not every opportunity ain't a God opportunity? So, mm. what if that's not? You know what I'm saying? And so, mm. um, I forgot the question you asked me. But yeah, yeah, I don't know what you just asked me. <laughs> you answered. <laughs> okay. You answer. All right. Bet. Um. Bet. So my last question before we leave. I don't want to leave. This is a good fellowship. Like I think sometimes people have a perception about people who are in the urban community like mm -hmm. oh he dresses this way he must not be a deep thinker or he dresses mm -hmm. this way or he's he comes off this way so yeah. you know he don't really know god so yeah. i love how you're you know changing the perspective and that's why i think interviews are very important not only for the artists to get their brand out but for mm -hmm. artists to for people to get the vulnerable side of the artist and not every interviewer is going to pull that out of you let's get that's that true. straight not that's at true. some interviewers like how you do this when you do this this and that mm -hmm. not every yeah. interviewer is going to pull out like you know let's sure. let's walk you through this so yeah. i love how that you're being very transparent and being very right. vulnerable in my in my opinion about your relationship right. with god and you know yeah yeah you know things are going on but at the end of the day yeah. see god like yeah, I'm getting shows here and there. Yeah, I'm doing this. Yeah, they want me to do this, but I have to seek God. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. So my, this is my personal question. Okay. The name Ken the Messenger, mm -hmm. where did that come from? Is that your name? Is your name Ken? And you're just like, so my, oh, just put Messenger on the end? Mm -hmm. Explain that. So my, my legal name is Kendall, Ken, Kendall Kendall, however mm -hmm. you want to pronounce it. Um, okay. My I go by Ken. I always just when I did when I went to music when I started doing music I went by Ken and my last name is Willis. Mm -hmm. and so I went by Ken Willis. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was working with this marketing company in like 2017, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Yo, we need to change. We need to give you something different." And so we were at I was at Fridays on 95th. You're not in Chicago, are you? 
No, I'm in Nashville area. Nashville? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm coming to Nashville, so we got a link. Yeah, we but, got a link. Um, I was in Chicago, and they were like, we got we to change some stuff up. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, cool, change it up, whatever. Um, and so we just was brainstorming, and they were like messenger. And at first, I'm like, huh? But then it's like, that's who we are, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so we, we all are messengers. We, especially when, when you're a Christian, mm -hmm. and not to be so deep, like not to be so deep, but when you're a Christian, or not even, that's not, you're not a Christian. If I told you something, mm -hmm. if I said, hey, um, the world is about to explode. Mm -hmm. Save everybody you can. And you go tell your people, your family, mama, dad, whoever, the world about to explode, save everybody you can. Like, mm -hmm. you're sending, a, you're a messenger, and that's exactly yeah. what happened with Christ. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the same thing. And so, as Christians, we know that he's coming back again. We know all of this stuff. And so, our only job is to go and tell other people that he did the same thing he did for us, he'll do for them. Mm -hmm. So, that's how, that's why I kept the name. Not not why I got it, but that's why I stayed with me, because that did the Bible talks about us being messages, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that is, even though you said not to be deep, that was deep, honestly. Okay, I apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I want to thank you yeah. so much for coming and fellowshipping with me. Like I said, course, you most definitely me. have changed somebody's perspective on here, and you've most definitely touched somebody's life on this live or who will be watching the playback. So I want to thank you. I appreciate y'all for having me. No problem, so until next time. You want to say anything yeah. before we go? Uh, I thank y'all, man, for tuning in and all the comments. I couldn't respond, you know, right now, but I will later. I appreciate y'all. All right, until next time. Love you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>